On June 4, 2004, in the small Colorado town of Grampy, local repair shop owner Marvin Hemeyer drove his armored bulldozer through several buildings, causing millions of damages. But why would such a likable person, such as Hemeyer, do something like this? Let's find out. Marvin John Hemeyer moved in-state from the Grand Lakes area to the town of Granby in 1992. He purchased a two-acre plot of land for $42,000 in order to build a muffler shop. He subsequently agreed to sell that land to Cody Doshef in order to build a concrete plant. The set price was $250,000 until Hemeyer changed his mind at the last minute and made it $375,000. Afterwards, he changed the price again to almost $1 million. Some believe that this negotiation happened before the rezoning proposal was heard by the town council. In 2001, the town trustees approved the building of the concrete plant, with Hemeyer attempting to appeal the decision. This was unsuccessful. The plant was to be built near the shop. For many years, Hemeyer had used the adjacent property as a way to get to his shop, but the plant blocked this access. If this wasn't bad enough for Hemeyer, he also received a $250,000 fine from the city council for various violations. These included having junk cars on his property and for not being hooked up to the sewer line. He might release his business and sold the property. A couple of years before the incident, he might have bought a bulldozer, which he was going to use in order to build an alternate route to his muffler shop. However, the city rejected his request to build it. So, with a bulldozer that he didn't want to go to waste, he heavily modified it to include makeshift armor plating, which covered the cabin, engine, and part of the tracks. The bulldozer had many other types of modifications, including several video cameras linked to monitors that were on the vehicle's dashboard. He also had free gun ports, each with a rifle. He might have stored the heavily armored machine in preparation for use. On June 4, 2004, Hemeyer drove the killdozer for his former business, along with 12 other buildings connected to his many disputes. These included the town hall, the home of the former mayor's widow, a hardware store owned by another man, the office of a local newspaper that editorialized against him, along with many others. The incident lasted two hours and seven minutes. Along with the damaged buildings, Hemeyer damaged a natural gas reserve connected to the city hall, a truck, and part of a utility service center. Even with all the destruction, Hemeyer went out of his way not to harm anyone. Even with this, the sheriff's department argued against it. Hemeyer fired many bullets at police in order to escape them. It has also been noted that 11 of the 13 buildings were occupied before destruction. The town library, which was destroyed by Hemeyer, was hosting a children's program at the time. Many attempts were made in order to stop the rampage, but all failed. But, two problems arose as Hemeyer destroyed the Gamble's hardware store. The radiation of the dozer had been damaged and the engine was leaking various fluids. Also, Hemeyer got trapped in the basement of the store. The engine failed and he was stuck. So he took out a small handgun, pointed it at his head, and ended his life. In order to access the kill dozer, police first used explosives to remove the steel plates. After three failed attempts, they decided to cut through them using an oxycetylene cutting torch. Authorities were able to remove Hemeyer's body the next day. On April 19, 2005, the town announced plans to scrap the killdozer. This involved dispersing individual pieces to many separate scrapyards to prevent souvenir taking. The name killdozer was used to describe the armored battle machine when it was used in the short story by Theodore Sturgeon. In addition to the writings they left on the wall of his shed, Hemeyer recorded a number of audio tapes explaining the motivations for the attack. He mailed these to his brother in South Dakota shortly before stepping into the bulldozer. These tapes were eventually turned over to the FBI. The tapes are two and a half hours long in total. Hello, my name is Marvin Hemeyer. Today is, uh, let's see here, April 13th. 
2004. I am making this tape. I thought I should make it a year ago. Made part of it. Didn't like it. Really didn't think it'd make any difference if I did make it, but a good friend of mine said I should make it. And he said I should sit down in front of a videotape machine and do it, but you're just going to have to take my word that this is Marv Hemeyer, serial number 503-689-471. And uh, it, I'm in, living in Grand Lake, Colorado. And this tape is about my life since I came up here to Grand Lake in 1991. I moved up here in the fall of 1991 to kind of take a six-month vacation. Had a guy and his wife who were leasing my muffler shop in Boulder at 4790 Pearl Street. Uh, they do not know what reason is. Reason it to them is doing it their way. And that's the only thing. Once they get that in their mind, that's the only thing that's reasonable. Well, I've developed that philosophy to a point, maybe even to a higher point, because I am going to be unreasonable to the extent that although they probably cost me a half a million dollars or more, or more, I know it's been more, I can, I can make it easily 300000 and That's based on my figures. My bookkeeper, who was Mark Krieg, felt that it cost me a half a million dollars. My accountant, Dave Patner, in Granby, both these people are in Granby, felt that it cost me a million dollars to, for what those, the town had done to me, what the Thompsons had done to me, what the Dolchefs had done to me, and what the sanitation district had done to me. With all the disputes that negatively affected him and his own mental troubles, it's easy to see why he would do something like this. All his anger was bottled up into this project, the Captain Killdozer incident. 